Hi, abstract lovers. My name is Doris Charret, and I'm here to tell you about some new books that I found, and it's about abstract and color. So using color in your abstracts is very important. It creates mood, creates effects. It's just great. So let's look at these books. Let's dive right in. The very first book is Painting Abstracts by Rolina Van Vliet. I'm not sure if I said that right, but she does a great job. She has several books and a lot of them deal with color and texture. I love these books. She's a very good author. She explains things really well. And you get all kinds of examples of different artwork. Plus the bonus is, is choosing the colors for the dramatic effect. Now, isn't this dramatic? That's fantastic. And again, more drama using different colors, but wonderful use of color. Texture is a really important thing for Rolina, and she shows you lots of examples. So if you like books with a variety of examples, a variety of styles, how to use color, how to use line. Here she's using resist with the color. It looks awesome. These are all really fun exercises that you can try and they're wonderful. Rolina does a great job in this book. Look at the drama in that painting. Isn't that awesome? Now that looks really simple, but it isn't. It's a really complex thing to do to get those soft edges and hard edges mixed together and make it look awesome. And she shows you step by step what to do. What more can you ask? She talks about composition, arranging your colors to make the most dramatic effect, using textures and a palette knife, not no palette knife here and more texture. This is just a wonderful book with full of exercises for you to do. And like most books, there's some great examples at the back. So you can see finished pieces, not just how to pieces, but actual finished pieces and their influences. So she started from a drawing, went to a two color, um, description or sketch and then moved on to the painting. So those are just wonderful things to have in the book and this is a really good one. Another book is Abstract Painting Concepts and Techniques by Vicki Perry. She does a great job too of, let me go through, so this is different styles. So if you really like texture, this is the book to have. What I like about this book is she shows paintings of master artists, like Mondrian in this case, and then goes on and describes different styles, different ways of painting, how they're done, and maybe how you could try these exercises. But these are all master artists, artists that have shown in galleries and museums for years. Look at the brush stroke here. The mark making is extraordinary. She has great examples. And then as you move on, she talks about supports, the kinds of mediums to use. This is a picture of an artist in a studio could easily be Jackson Pollock. Another style, linear work, geometric work. She covers all kinds of style, a little bit of Matisse style. This is the more uh, simplified style. I think it's called minimalist. And she goes through and you can see all the different kinds of styles there is with abstract art. This is a great way for you to find out what you like and how you want to paint. Remember that it doesn't matter if it was painted before, it's never been painted by you in your own unique style. So these are actually really wonderful examples that they have here. 
of abstract paintings. Different styles, again, the minimalist look, and different shapes, different textures, how that's done, a great book. So again, that's Abstract Paintings by Vicki Perry. This color one is really unique. Styles, it's more like a semi-abstract and how to simplify, but also using very bright colors and using a color palette. So when you paint an abstract, you don't just use one color. And what you do is you choose a color palette. This is a complementary color palette, greens with orange peach colors little bits of purple and yellow, great complementary uh, use of complementary colors. Here, how to simplify a figure, simplifying landscape. Notice the color. It's very difficult to use bright colors like this and have the painting turn out, but she does a great job here of showing examples that you can follow along and try out yourself. Even figures, simplifying figures. Remember, your style is your own. And if some of these influence you, all the better. This is a great use of color right here. The yellow with the purple, that's a great combination. The teal color with the orange, that's fantastic. Those are great uses of color. This person does a great job. Look at this orange with the purple. Isn't that wonderful? Great use of color. So if you want to learn more about color, this is the book for you. There's lots of great examples of colors and combinations that you can use. Here we go more examples and like at the end of every book finished pieces that you can be inspired from so this is by claire harrigan and robin capon great job this is george blacklock color and abstraction george does a great job of showing different styles different ways of using those styles, combinations of colors, linear styles combined with brush marks and more brush marks. But look at the use of these colors. It's not very different from the last book. Really good use of complementary colors. Now use those same complementary colors and use a different style. Be inspired by the colors that you see in this book, the color combinations, and try them out in your own way. I love this neutral piece, but at the same time, I love the brightly colored pieces. It's really hard to choose. Now, in your own style, you can choose whatever you like and color combinations. The use of shapes with different colors and how the drama can be. So this is a great use of the yellow, little bits of peaches in there, and then a dark. Now this looks like black, but I can tell that there's a little bit of purple in that black around the edges. So that would be a great complement to the yellow. Again, different style beautiful color combinations using different techniques. You can learn and try these techniques. Mark making. Mark making is a big part of abstraction and you can have a chance to just go through and check these out. And by the end, you're seeing finished pieces and examples of what you can do with mark making. So if you're a person that likes mark making, this is the book for you. Look at these examples. Different ways you can crop paintings or arrange your marks on the canvas or the paper that you use. Wonderful examples, simplified, and then how to add color to them. 
So this is another great book by George Blacklock, but I saved my favorite for last, Abstract Art Painting by Deborah Stewart. Deborah loves uh, chalk pastels. So mainly she uses chalk pastels in this book. You don't have to use chalk pastels, but what you can do is use paint instead. So she does talk about paint and using paint, but her main interest is chalk pastels. What I love about Deborah's work here and her examples is her great use of color complements. The color combinations she uses are fantastic. It's really difficult to use bright colors together and she does a great job. Look at this, how wonderful that is, how rich the color is. And the colors she uses that work well together. As we scroll through, we see more examples. She shows us how she starts a painting and then end products different color combinations she used and the result of it. You can see how the mark making is important here and that's really easy in uh, chalk pastels. Again, softness, different style, but also works really well because the color is good. And we keep going and look at the use of colors. Again, the use of complements oranges and yellows with purples, great color combinations. And then she shows you how to put these together. You can even try abstracting a face. Just look at the softness. Now there's bold marks, there's small marks, there's different colors and complementary colors. She just does a wonderful job of combining different colors. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but in most abstracts, what happens is you have color combinations. You have one dominant color, one secondary color, and one color that adds little elements of interest. So the dominant color would be this, the secondary color would be these, and then these little colors they, they're sort of like accents that really help the painting. And then she shows you how she goes about using paint. And the end product. This is a wonderful painting as well. Complements, drama, darks against lights. That makes for a great painting. And as I keep going, you can see that she has a really good sense of color and of uh, drama. I call it drama, it's really contrast. So lights against darks, brights against dull colors, and that really creates a lot of excitement in a painting. And here she goes through how she mixes her paint, then how she adds chalk pastels. She goes through how she just works a painting and all the way through. Notice it's not a one-step process. We're at 17 already. And as we keep going, she goes all the way to 24. 24 different steps to create this painting. I'm sure she simplified it because most paintings take even more than 24 steps. And then a second painting here where she only has 14 steps. But look at the great color. One dominant color, the orange. Secondary color would be the yellow. And then little tiny marks of the purple and the blue that go really well with the orange. This is a great book. If you want to learn about color and different color combinations, this is the book for you. So again, this is Abstract Painting by Deborah Stewart. And thanks for joining me with these abstract books and my favorite ones. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.